Hey everybody, welcome to Pearls of Eden. Thank you for joining me this morning. I'm going to touch on a topic that can be very difficult for people to hear on both sides of the equation. I'm going to talk about hospitality and politics. Politics. I'm sorry, it's early y'all. Um, a lot of times when we think about our borders and we think about immigrants, the first thing from each party is one side says we've got to protect, one says we've got to include. And um, I think there's room for us all to hear one another on this particular topic. Now, I know the conservative party, they say, hey, we want to protect and we do want to include as well. I think that's the misconception that um, the left thinks that the right doesn't want to include. They do want to include, but they want things to be done in a proper manner. Just like we put a door on our house, we have the ability to invite who we want to come inside and there's protocol. And the right on their side, they say, hey, we just want to make sure that people are vetted. We want to make sure we know who comes into our country. We want to make sure that they come in through the right door and not grant them a legal access. There's a right way to do something and there's a wrong way to do something. And I understand on the left side, they say, well, you know, we want to include everybody. And if they're here, we just want to make sure that they are treated fairly. And I think both sides want to make sure that everyone's treated fairly because that's the humanity within us and if you're a true believer we know we want to see Jesus in everyone right so we have to be very careful that we don't get callous and we don't get loose either but that we are thinking um that we are well balanced and we are vigilant and we are in uh, we don't just use our heart and don't think right we have to use both so let, what does the scripture say? Let's let's get to it. It says in Leviticus, in Old Testament, Leviticus 19, verse 33 through 34, when an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself. It goes back to that ultimate commandment, loving your neighbor as yourself. So how do I view this? I believe we do have to have rules, policies, and regulations just to protect. Even in the Bible, there were walls, there were borders built to keep people out that did not belong, right? Um, but at the same time, God says, if a stranger is among you, you treat them with respect. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, they're getting treated with a lot of respect, right? They're getting better services than even those who live in America who were born, bought, raised <laughs> here um, and in America. So that's where a conflict comes in because it's like, well, why are they getting like over $36,000 of rewards for coming here illegally and then here i've been here all my life or i'm a veteran and i can't even get any aid i think that's something we can talk about but at the end of the day they are here so my thought is that we must you know treat them with honor treat them with respect i know people don't want to hear it but the word of the lord stands true in my life so when i see someone that has come over here illegally I'm not gonna mistreat them, but I wanna make sure and I wanna see that they do have provisions because they are here. And it goes back to if an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat them. You either believe the word or you don't. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. So that means, now here's the tricky part. Are they being treated as one of the native borns? Are, are they being treated better? And I think that is where you have a lot of conflict because, you know, conservatives say, well, we've got homeless people on the street and yet we've got people coming in here living the life of Raleigh because they're getting all of these um, benefits. They're giving all of these vouchers. They're giving credit cards to live on. And meanwhile, you know, I can't even pay my rent. Meanwhile, you know, I don't even know where my next meal is coming from. So I think we have work to do, right? We want to make sure that we are treating well the immigrant, the alien that is in our country, because that's what the word of God says. 
We also want to make sure we do a better job of having proper procedures and protocols and borders and things established to protect not only our nation so that people can be properly vetted because right now we really don't know who's coming in and that is a security breach, right? That's scary to think about that you don't know who's coming in. You don't know why they're fleeing their, um, their nation. You don't know what they're bringing. Meanwhile, there are some hardworking people that they truly want to come over here and we want them over here, right? We just want them to go through the proper channels, right? Because as a nation, in order to secure our nation, we have to protect it. And that means we have to have rules, just like you have a fence. Some of you have a fence around your house, right? Why did you put that fence there? To keep people from trespassing on your land. Why do you have a door on your home, right? to keep people from coming in that don't belong there. They don't pay any rent. They don't pay any taxes in your house. They don't live there. That You don't want just any and everybody to be able to say, well, I'm here now, so you got to provide for me because now I'm in your house, right? I got in. I know I got in illegally in your house, but now I am a part of your family and I need for you um, to give me a dinner voucher. I need for you to give me a room to stay. You know, if we think about it practically, we can understand. And I think there's room for us all to really sit down and find out a way. How do we treat them, the, the people that are here? We want to treat them with respect and honor, but also establish rules, establish boundaries um, to protect our nation as well. So there's a lot to talk about, right? But I just wanted to show you what the word of the Lord says, because at the end of the day, you know, no matter what was meant for evil, God can use it for our good. And, and in the midst of all of the elections, we don't want to forget the word. In the midst of all of our political beliefs, we don't want to forget to see Jesus in everyone. And I even, you know, you, you just have to be so very careful. I have to check myself all and through this process to remember to keep the heart of Christ. Yes, use wisdom, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, but to maintain the love and grace in my heart because at the end of the day, we are all fallen people in need of a savior. We all need Jesus. And if you don't think you do, if you think you're so perfect and we all fall short, we all need Jesus. And we just have to remember that just like we need Jesus, other people do too, right? And see the opportunity. Ask God each day, See me. let me see the opportunities that you have to make a difference in other people's lives and to show love and to show grace and to show compassion, just as it says. It says in Hebrews 13, 16, do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. These are the words that we have to hold dear to our heart. At the end of the day, it's not about conservative. It's not about liberal. It's about, will you do the will of the Father? You all, I have said this many times. Yes, I lean conservative in policies and legislation, but at the end of the day, I'm not registered as a Republican, right? I am independent because I always want to make sure that I am voting for the person that I believe is going to align best with the policies and the legislation to move the kingdom forward, the kingdom of God, so we can see thy heaven on earth as it is, that will be done as it is in heaven on earth, right? That That is my whole agenda to be aligned with God, who is on the Lord's side. You know, remember when Joshua saw the man with the sword, many people thought it was Joshua, the angel. And he says, whose side are you on? And he said, neither. I'm on the Lord's side. And we have to be like that as believers to pick truth above the lies. And to remember that at the end of the day, we are on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. All right, guys, I pray that this word blessed you on this wisdom Wednesday. Don't be like the priest. Don't be like the young ruler. You know, when they said, who is my neighbor? And they passed by 
the man that was dripping in blood. They passed by the man that they saw hurting on the street, but it was the good Samaritan that said, I will bind up his wounds. I will take him to the hotel. I will pay his fee, even though it's not mine. And if he incurs anything, if there's anything else he needs, put it on my tab. How many of us are willing to step outside of religion, step out of these religious mindsets, and just be willing to help those in need? God can figure out all the rest. I do believe that. All right, guys, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I hope this word gives us all something to think about and evaluate ourselves and to make sure that we have the heart of God when we interact with everyone every day. All right, guys, I love you. Bye.